welcome to Enlighten exclusively on A1R Psychic Radio. You can catch Enlighten every Thursday um, at 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.45 p.m. Central. Couldn't think of a perfect day or better date to have this show than on 11.11. And this evening, you guys, I'm going to be taking a caller, so I'm really looking forward to connecting with you later on in this show. There is a lot going on right now in the collective. Astrologically speaking, um, we, are, we are going through what it is called Gate 43. And no, we are not going to the airport. Um, we are experiencing major shifts in ourselves and personal transformation and self-discovery. So gate 43 is all about stillness. It's all about insight. A lot of us, as of what I've seen, a recurrent theme um, as of lately, we have been looking for more direction, redirection and connection to self. And we will notice once we step away and we have that silent moment and we take away all of the external commentary. We take away the logical mind and thinking. We'll find that we have this beautiful space of connection. And that's what it is all about from November 11th to the 15th. A lot of us will be finding that urge or desire to really take a few steps back and, and connect with self and uh, what I always suggest, especially during times like these, is, is self-inquiry. When you have those few moments to, to step away and have some silent time, turning off the cell phone, turning off the TV. If you're someone that likes to journal, I am a very, very big advocate for journaling. Allowing yourself to ask these questions. It's all geared towards connecting to our intuition because our, our souls, will guide us if we allow that, if we surrender the logical mind, if we surrender the external commentary that's in our day-to-day -day lives, we will find that connection. And it's, it's one of the most beautiful things, one of my favorite things as an evidential medium, when I'm able to be a part of someone's self-discovery, when someone finds that connection within themselves to, to really live their life path the way that they want to. It's all about self-empowerment right now. It's all about how we're going to pick ourselves up. A lot of us have been going through some, some challenging times lately. So I just want to send all of you love. So much love, so much blessings. When you're in this space, I would highly suggest having the journal so you can ask yourself some questions and challenging yourself. Ask and you shall receive. And I'm getting ready to take a caller in, in just a second. We have Stephanie in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you so much for calling tonight. Thank you. Thanks for taking my call. So what, what would you like some guidance on tonight? What kind of reading, what, what, what were some questions that you had for me this evening? Um, well, I it really you could pick anything, but I am today is eleven eleven, you know, the twin flame thing, and so I'm definitely curious to see what's going on with my twin flame relationship. If you could help me with that, absolutely. The, the first thing that comes to mind for me is communication, and it also looks like you two are going through a phase of distance. Is that about right? I almost see like push and pull and then distance. Yeah, we are definitely in separation right now. We haven't talked in a while. I would suggest sending some healing energy and visualizing that energy going into his soul and his higher self. And it feels like that must be something that you've already been doing. So all in all, communication. And while you're in the separation phase, that even looks like setting intentions and setting affirmations that's geared towards healing for both parties. Because it feels like 
in his life right now, he is at a fork in the road. And it looks like both of you have parallel experiences right now. And you must be feeling that the same way. Is that about right? Yeah, we, we've had a, a lot of challenging, um, we, we were together 11 years and we've been apart for a year now. And um, it's been a very challenging year. My, my mom is really, really sick. And, um, and I just like recently, since she's gotten sicker, I've been wanting to call and just tell him what's going on and just wanting to say, it's going to be okay. And, you know, hear all that kind of stuff. And I'm scared to call him. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just feel like I shouldn't, but I should, you know, cause it's my mom and he was close to her too. So I'm just kind of all in my feelings right now with it. I'm so sorry to hear with everything that, that you've been going through and experiencing. I do Thank feel, you. especially during this time as there are some parallel occurrences going on. It does look like a phone call is something that is, it looks supported. It does look like it's, both of you are in need of reassurance right now. He is as well. He's very conflicted, I'm feeling, and it looks like in terms of transitioning, he wants to stay in this area, and it feels like it has to do with moving as well. So there, there, there's got to be something going on with him. And I, and I do feel that you have been on his mind as well. So it does look like everything will be okay in terms of you reaching out to him, um, in terms of reassurance. He, he needs to see that you haven't completely gone away as well. There is fear about okay. reaching out to you as well. I feel that's mutual. Yeah, he... Um... He has, we have a, a third party situation. The whole karmic thing is involved. And I'm, that's one of the reasons I'm scared to reach out to him because I don't want to make waves with, you know, I don't want to be that, that person, you know, like I don't want to look like the girl that can't let go. But then again, I know how, you know what I mean? I know it sounds funny. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to describe, but um, I, I kind of know what's going on with him too. We don't really talk that much. We haven't talked since July, but um, I'm, we went to high school together. So we've known each other for over 20 years. Um, and so we still have the same friends and, you know, his family and my family are friends. And so I kind of know what's still going on with him. I know he's got a lot going on too. And so I thought, okay, well, do I say something? Do I not say something? You know, it's so weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, him popping in your mind more often, especially with the twin flame connection is also an indicator that he's been thinking um, about you as well. But I would trust how you feel right now and trust okay. where you're getting these inspired thoughts. Cause it feels like it's, it's all inspiring you to do that. But I would suggest doing some, I would suggest some self care first, some meditation, um, some affirmations um, for healing as a collective for the both of you at this time. Okay. I feel that would be good. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you so much for, for coming on here this evening. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Bye -bye. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, everybody. So I want to go back to the topic about connecting to intuition and learning how to trust that. I was actually just talking to someone earlier Um who's in the process of connecting to her own intuition. And a, a common theme with that is, is confidence. Um, having the confidence to trust when we're receiving insight. We're receiving those, I call them downloads sometimes, because they come in, sometimes they come in really fast. Um, it's all going back to self-inquiry. Everyone's different when it comes to having your own toolbox, when it comes to setting up your own foundation to connect to the intuition. So asking yourself some questions such as, what is it I need to get into this space of mindfulness? What are some things that I can do? How can I allow myself to receive more inspired thoughts that benefits my ultimate highest good. Now, more than ever, I feel it's really important to nurture these belief systems, nurturing and cultivating that, especially with 
you know, the past two years, all of us have been going through so many transformations, so much self-discovery, and all of us are in that space and moment right now. So I always suggest having that self-inquiry, especially during this time. And it, the source, our higher power, always has our back. When we set our intentions, I am in such alignment with my inner being. I am so grounded to the core of who I am. And you believe that. You can not only prove to yourself that you're a powerful creator, but you'll start to receive a lot more guidance. And when we surrender to the outcome of how we receive it and not focus on a particular outlet that we would receive it, um, you will start, start receiving in so many different areas. And that also comes down to when we receive signs from our loved ones in spirit. Um, a really big question that I get from a, a lot of people is how can we get more connected to our signs? And the big answer to that is surrendering. Surrendering to the outcome. Our loved ones go out of their way and they try so hard to get our attention, whether it's a dream, whether it's feathers or coins. They are, they're their soul, they're their personality. Sometimes they're funny. Um, they play pranks on you. Um, when it comes to intuition and receiving signs as well, you can get signs even on license plates with numbers. It really all varies. So I hope all of this is helpful, you guys. From November 11th to the 15th, be expecting that urge to retreat and look more at self and having that self inquiry for you can really help with your personal transitions. So I'm sending all of you so much love and thank you so much for watching Enlighten this weekend. Just a reminder, you can watch the show every Thursday. It is at 8.45 p.m. Eastern time, 7.45 p.m. Central time.